guys, it's Kat, and I'm going to describe to you how I made this little bird charm for a pendant in ZBrush. So this is sculpted in a CAD program, um, hand sculpted, so it's more like using traditional methods. But I'm going to bring in this blob of kind of clay onto the screen. So it's actually called a sphere primitive. And I'm using one of the brushes, the snake hook brush, to pull this out into a particular shape that looks bird-like. I've also placed the previous bird that I'd already made up on the corner so I can just follow along so you see what it is that we're making. Now I use a mask tool, a perfect circle mask, to create the eye and then also to come in and create the beak. And then I'm shrinking it on two axes, but that gradient is causing it to make a cone shape. And I situate it and kind of refine the shape a little bit. Now in the first iteration of this bird, I thought I might add a, a pair of wings. And so I use extract to take those out and I smooth them out. I'm going to round them over a bit and position them and then use the damn standard brush to apply some sort of decoration on the wing. Now I'm adding a jump ring and I fatten it because that'll make it a little bit easier for me to cast since I am casting these. And then I add another jump ring just to get a feel for how's that going to look. And I actually like the simplified version of the bird. I think it was quite cute, so I actually saved a copy of it so I could go back and maybe do that and print that one as well. Now I'm creating a bezel setting for the eye, and then I brought in a stone, a faceted stone, and it looks something like that. I actually like that a lot, but now I'm going to go back in and start carving the feathers. And so I'm using something called the um, clay buildup tool, and you'll notice over on the left there's a an alpha that is a square shape, and that's what's giving it the sharp edges around. And I just continue on. Um, I could use a mask to do this, but a mask is going to be more uniform. And I really wanted this to look like it was hand sculpted, so the finished product will look more like a handmade piece than something that was done on a computer. So using just standard techniques, I'm, I'm applying some material, and then I go back in and carve it out, kind of smooth it out first. And then I'll go in and start carving out some of the center areas of it. And it, it's not supposed to look exactly like a feather. It's just supposed to kind of give you the hint of a feather. So I just, once I get going, I'm just applying these little horseshoe shapes on the body. Also going on the bottom here. Now something else I might do when I actually cast this is I might flatten the bottom, bottom of the bird a little bit. Because you can see along that bottom edge that there are some... I guess bumpy areas and you would have to support each one of those with a support on your 3D printer. So I'm just kind of making little horseshoes, make sure they're they're kind of turning as I go around the body. Add some more and some more. And I'm not really paying attention to the details on this yet. So you can go in and refine your details later. I'm just applying material and getting the pattern on. Also around his eyes, this is not going to matter because on this version of it, I'm going to have the bezel set eye, so it won't matter if we've actually got material over that eye hole. So you can see here I'm just adding, continuing to add, and I masked off the beak, so anywhere that it's masked, it won't apply any material, so that kept the beak nice and clean. So now I'm using the Option or Alt key to go back in with the clay buildup brush and actually carve this out. So I'm just trying to give it more of a sharp edge, I guess, around the edge of that, that feathery shape. Because as the plane changes, I guess, um, that's what's going to catch the light and make it look a little bit more dimensional. So I'm just carving that out to give it a little bit more texture. And again, it's just the hint of a feather. It's not realistic at all, but when this is very, very small, you're not going to see a lot of this detail. So we're over-exaggerating. Actually, the pattern is sticking up above the surface sufficiently so this will show when it's printed and when it's cast. In some situations, I'll measure how high this is above the surface, but in this case, I can tell from experience that this will cast just fine. Now carve it out. And if you're keeping track, I actually forget a couple of these, so I'll go back later and fix them. So I just carve this out and then press the shift key and smooth. Carve, 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 smooth. And just keep going around the whole bird that way. 
Again, you can see this is an uneven edge on the bottom and that might cause some issues when I'm printing, but I might test it. I might do one with a little bit smoother underside or down at that very bottom, I might just kind of cut those little tips off of the, the feathers. So I'm carving out some more, I'm getting real close. I could have used a mask around the face and the mask would have protected the beak while I was working, but there we go. I still am missing a couple of the feathers. So there we go. I like how it looks. I had a little bit more material kind of define those uh, overlaps. I found another one I'd forgotten. There's actually a couple more. But when I turn that to gold, so that, that looks like I want it to. So now I'm going to go back and start looking at adding some detail. And I'm trying a couple different brushes. Now this one carves into the surface. This one sticks out, but the one that was carved into the surface might not even show up. So having one that's raised from the surface, and I'm using the damn standard brush, but using it in an addition mode rather than carving into the surface. And I also increased the brush size. Um, actually, I, by using the alpha, I changed it so it's a little bit more prominent. And I had some problems zooming in there, but once I get that figured out, then it's real quick to go through. And again, I'm doing this by hand. I'm not using a mask or anything because I want this to look like it's handmade, like I carved it with a wax pen, you know, applied material carved into it. This would be a, you know, something that you had added in with, with your little, you know, heat pen or wax pen. And a lot of that detail when it's actually printed, it may not even show up, but you'll get the hint of a feather. You'll, you'll get kind of the idea that some kind of texture is there. Now that last one I just put in, it won't matter because I have a uh, jump ring that's going to go right into that one. I also figure at this point I like the longer feathers, so I think if I were to do this over again I might use longer feathers. Or even pay attention to what the feathers look like. Do I have to carve that one out again? But I might even look at a drawing of a bird's wing and try and make those feathers look more like the wing. But this is just kind of a hint of a bird. It's, it's stylized, so you can do whatever you want. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the bottom, add those little feathers, continue around, just like that. Now, I need to duplicate the eye, the little bezel set eye. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the top, I angle it so it's actually situated on the surface correctly and then duplicate. And I turn transparency on so I can see where this is and I can see that it's not raised off the surface very much so I'm just rotating it. If I'm using a hammer drill, I need that bezel to be raised up off the surface just a bit. And then I add my jump ring back in. However, when I cast, I'm actually going to turn that big jump ring off. But I'm creating this cylinder, which is going to cut all the way through, and I'm using a dynamish, basically a subtraction, to cut a tunnel through the bird. And then I'm trying some different methods to maybe isolate that beak, maybe set that off a bit. Now this, when I printed it, would have been really, really small, and you may not have even seen it. So I did an undo, and I brought in a ring, and rotating it and putting it on the, the beak, trying to see if that would work. And I don't like it. It's actually too, I guess, stiff. It's not really uh, handmade looking. So then I go back to my damn standard brush, and this time I'm carving in. And I make a mistake on this one, and the reason is is because up top, where it says uh, MRGB, I'm, when I'm painting this, or when I'm using this brush, I'm actually painting a texture. So you can see the blue there. I didn't mean to do that. So then I go back and I turn off the material channel while I'm drawing, smooth that in, and then there's my bird. And what I'll do is I'll create the support structure for that, export it to a 3D printer, and then I'll cast. It's kind of like lost wax casting, but uh, in this case, it's just using resin.